Thank you. Well, welcome back, and it's time to meet our special guest now, and it's a lady who I've been dying to meet for a long time, and so many of you have asked to meet as well. She is Miss Joan Sims. <laughs> Uh, it's lovely to have you on the show, Joan. Almost a first for us, I believe, actually. Yes, it is. yes lovely. Yes. Well, Joan, I'm looking down this list here. It's absolutely incredible. Have you any idea how many films you've actually done? No, I haven't actually. Well, I'll tell you, it's over 70 films you've Ooh. been in. Oh, Isn't God. that marvellous? But you've done lots of, of comedy roles. Well, I mean, that's what we all know you as much. Yes. But you've done one or two dramatic roles as well. That's and right. there's one here, uh, fascinating to me, Colonel March Investigates. Oh, yeah. Well, now, that was the very first film I ever made, and it was with uh, Boris Karloff, believe it or oh, not. about that, yeah. And he was the sweetest, gentlest man I think I've ever met. Really? Quite unlike his movie. And he used to frighten the living daylights <laughs> out of us, didn't he? <laughs> Boris Karloff. Now, Doctor in the House, that's not a drama, but I did put it down because it was such a famous film. Yes, and I played uh, rigor mortis in that. <laughs> I've got one down here, actually, uh, and I've mentioned this film particularly, Joe, because it was one of my favourite films of all time, and not many people know about it at all. It was a film called Meet Mr. Lucifer. Now, do you remember that film at all? Good grief, yes. That was years ago, That's it? right. Well, I, I'm, I'm very I, old. I go to see them all, you know. Did and you I were a child star. Did I play a fairy? I, you played a fairy. And I seem that. to remember right. I was flown. On a wire. That's right, with That's Kirby's right. wire. That's right. <laughs> now, Stanley yes. Holloway was the demon king in that. That's right, film. yes. Now, I've got a marvellous film written down here because it was a terrifically good drama. Uh, the Sea Shall Not Have Them. Do you remember mm. that? Yes, I do. I, I remember that very well indeed. <laughs> that was going to be actually my entree into playing serious parts, you know, where I could jerk a tear in the cinema. And uh, I had this scene to play with, with Griffith Jones, who I had not worked with before, but it only needed me to meet him, and I saw the twinkle in the eye, do you know what I mean? He was a terrible giggler. <laughs> now, he was playing this commanding officer, you see, and it was a very pathetic little scene where my husband has been reported missing, and I go and play this scene with him and ask, is there any hope for my husband ever being found again, you see? And we are about to embark upon this scene, and would you believe they had got the location outside a gentleman's lavatory <laughs> <laughs> on a station? And I started off and suddenly we heard... <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at Griffith Jones and the face started to go and the eyes started to fill with tears and he started to crack up, you see, and I started to crack up. <laughs> <laughs> All this time, was, uh, is there any news of my... <laughs> <laughs> I could be hearing that. Yes, <laughs> and the director said, look, we better do a reverse shot on this and try it on Joan. Well, of course, it was just as bad when they came to me. My, my, my face was like a crushed bun. You know? <laughs> I think we did about 13 takes on this rest of thing, and, oh, of course, the whole thing went completely by the board. What a lovely place to set it up, yes, outside, outside of gentleman. gentleman's You get all the nice places to I work. I do, I go to all the smart places. <laughs> well, Joan, I want to have a look at our first clip now, and it, it goes back to 1959, and it's Joan in a film with a marvellous title called Please Turn Over. Hello. Who? Pinewood what? Story department? You got the wrong number. Eh? What? Buy the book? What book? Listen, if you want to buy a book, you go to a ruddy bookshop. What do you mean, ring me up here? Buy me on, you're having me on. Clear off! Every minute of the day, I'm sick to death of these ruddy callers. We don't buy nothing at the door. I'm not selling anything. Are you Mrs. Halliday? She ain't in. I'm the daily worker. What do you want? I'd like to see Miss Halliday, please. Why? Would you please tell her Robert Hughes is here? Now, you look here. I don't know you, don't know nothing about you. Don't like the look of you, neither. And just suppose I told you, eh? And just suppose you found her and finangled your way into her trust and ruined her young life, eh? Hm. I should smile, not so likely. What? Excuse me, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Take more on you to trouble me, lad. <laughs> Hello. Who? News of the what? No, she ain't. Yes, I am. Naked? How dare you? Sterilisation? I am listening. 
Oh, serialisation. <laughs> now listen, you. I'm fed up with these air salacious calls. Yes, you have. It's the same voice each time. I know, I can tell. Well, now next time I shall complain to the police so you can clear off this line and stay off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Carry On films now yes. because I mean that you, you know you've made such a name for yourself in that. Now when we see them, they always do look such fun. Yes. I mean they really do look such fun. But I mean, were they really fun to do? Yes, of course. I they mean, were. it was just it was a wonderful uh, team. That was the whole point of it. Mm. Uh, I mean, we all worked together, and we were like a lot of kids actually. I mean, it was just so lovely when we, I mean Hattie and I, for instance. You know, we'd phone one another up and say, "Look, we're not going to do this load of rubbish again, are we?" I mean, it's all the same old jokes, Hattie. And she's, "Oh, come on, darling, it'll be fun." You know, and it was. I mean, we used to meet on the first day, and for instance, on Cowboy, you know, there was Sid all dressed up. <laughs> and he was sort of prancing around the set like the Chanel and doing this. I mean, we used to adore it, and we we really did. We had tremendous fun. But there was always time for the little joke because that's what kept us always happy. Yeah. And uh, I remember, for instance, one time we were doing. I think it was called Carry On Regardless, and uh, I had to do a wine tasting, and. Um, it was all set up the night before, ready to shoot at 8.30 the next morning when we arrived on the set. And uh, I got there and Jerry said, OK, darling, he said, we'll just run it through once and then we'll take it. So we ran it through, you see, and then we, he said, right, OK, here we go. Now, mark you, this is 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> and I go down the line of drinks and I get to about the third one and I go, and it is neat gin. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was out for the count for the rest of the day. <laughs> Rigor mortis did say in <laughs> yes. that day, yeah. Well, I know you work with, uh, well, uh, people always imagined that they were, were very lo exotic locations. I mean, oh. carry on abroad and carry, carry on, on camping. And... No, dear. No. 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 The back lot at Pinewood. It was all done in yes. England, carry on all, abroad. All, all the carry-ons were done in England. We yeah. never went outside. England at all. Because right. Carrie and Campbell always looked so wonderful. I mean, oh, it was I in know. a lovely it summer, you know. Glorious, didn't mm. it? Do you know they were painting the mud green <laughs> to make it look like grass? This is absolutely true. <laughs> we were frozen. <laughs> the director kept saying, Think, son, think, son, and we're all going. <laughs> and in, in Carry On Abroad, it's absolutely true, there was a Force 9 gale blowing, and the props men had to be there holding the palm trees down so they wouldn't blow over and the lighting cameraman came up to Gerald Thomas at one point and he said look Jerry he said I'll have to put Joan under an arc lamp because he, cause he said to warm her up because he said she's gone blue and I can't shoot on <laughs> oh, I but through it all we had we had laughs I mean it was just wonderful good fun oh, well, have, we're gonna have a look at a clip from a carry-on now mm. and it's it's one called carry on at your convenience that's <laughs> nice isn't it should really be you and Griffith Jones actually yes. but it is actually Jane <laughs> and the unforgettable Sydney James <laughs> Beautiful, <isn't it? laughs> it's a lovely little scene that very yes. unlike a, a carry-on yes Scene, wasn't it's it? Lovely, yeah. That lovely face of old Sid at the end. Oh, bless his heart, yes. Joan, I'm afraid we've got to say ta now. Yeah. Uh, thank you all very much indeed for coming to see us today. Thank you very much for watching. Keep those letters coming in, won't you? We'd love to hear from you. And will you now join me in thanking our special guest, Joan Sims. <laughs> Next week, at the same time in Movie Memories, Roy Hudd meets the British actor Guy Roth.